Hey again from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making some homebrew wine from some red grapes, some plums and some apples from my garden. So here's the fruit that's going into the wine. I've washed it all and it's now ready to be chopped and prepared. So as far as the apples go, they're just going to get roughly chopped like so. I'll quarter them and chuck them into a deep saucepan. So here they are and I'm just going to cover them with spring water so they don't go brown. And I'm using spring water because Leeds tap water is a bit chlorine for making wine with. Lid on, gas on, ignition. Right, I'm going to turn that down and I just want that to come to the boil and begin to simmer so the apples soften. Plums. So I'm cutting my plums down the middle and around obviously a stone in there so I've cut around the stone and again down the side so I can remove all the flesh without the stone and my plum flesh goes into the blender and now my grapes so this is pretty straightforward literally take grape off stalk put grape in blender with plums and repeat and repeat, and repeat. You get the picture. So I've got my grapes in the blender. I'm gonna add some spring water on top, just to cover them up. Looks healthy. Lid on, and now the noisy bit. I've got another saucepan on the hob. I've got some more spring water. I'm going to add that into the saucepan. Okay, so the water's now in the pan, the heat's on, and I'm adding most of a bag of sugar. So this is a one kilogram bag of sugar, and I'm probably putting about 900 of those grams in there right now. I just save a little bit for later. So I just want this sugar to dissolve. The water doesn't actually need to boil. If I can get the sugar to dissolve first, I'll turn it off. So the situation at present is, I'm waiting for the apples to simmer. I'm waiting for the sugar water to dissolve, but the grapes and plums have been pulped, mixed with spring water, and now it's time to extract the juices. Okay, so I've got a clean and sterilised jug, clean and sterilised plastic sieve, which is quite a fine sieve. And simply, I'm going to pour this to try and get all the juice out without getting too much of the solid matter. And it's a little bit necessary to work it with a, a wooden spoon. But that will go through quite nicely. So after working this, with the spoon that's literally all I'm left with in the sieve and underneath we've got some nice juice now that juice will be sediment heavy but that's fine because I will decant this into another demijohn after about three or four weeks so my apples have now come to the boil I can turn them off and just look how easily they break up they literally just go to nothing Apples don't take any time at all to break down in hot water. So I'm just going to swish these around for a little bit. I'm going to leave them to cool because they're currently too hot to go through the plastic sieve. So over to the sugar water and you can see that the majority of the sugar has in fact dissolved. So after a little bit of encouragement with the spoon, the sugar from the bottom has gone and it's now a completely clear solution. I just need to let this cool as well because the damage on that I want to pour it into is a plastic one. So just while I'm waiting for things to cool, I've got myself a cup of tea. But here's a little top tip for you. This is five litres. It's the same size as a demijohn, 
um, and it's clean, completely clean. It's just had spring water inside it, nothing else. So why don't I just use this as a demijohn? Then I haven't got to clean it, I haven't got to worry about that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I simply take off the lid, pop it on there. So this is my Makita drill. And on the end, you can see that there's quite a wide wood boring bit. I don't need that. I just need the pointy bit on the end. And very carefully, I'm just going to drill down the middle of the cap. Mind your fingers if you do this. You see that? Okay. This is the airlock, which goes into normally into a bung. But there's enough flexibility in this for me to push it through. Take a little bit of teasing. There we go, that's completely sealed. And that will screw into here. So the bottle of water that I bought in effect becomes my next demijohn. Never buy a demijohn again. Right, it's time to put the liquid from the grapes and the plums into the demijohn. The uh, matter that is left behind in the sieve will simply go in compost. It's beautiful and thick. There will be a lot of sediment, but that's not a problem. So the apples are still steamy, but they've cooled enough to go through the sieve now. And as before, it's just a case of working it through the sieve. We don't want any of the big matter, I don't want any of the pips, I don't want any of the skins, and I don't want any of the core going through, but I don't mind some of the finer flesh going into the liquid. It's fine for now. So that's what I'm left with in the sieve, not a lot. Again, that goes to compost. And here is my apple water. And again, this gets poured into the demijohn. So this is going to be absolutely packed with flavour. I'm just going to pour some of the sugar water into the jug. That will facilitate it cooling down quicker. Okay, the sugar water is now cool enough to go into the plastic. It's still warm, but it's not hot. And I won't put any more in because I need to put the yeast in next and it will likely cause a bit of a foam on top. Okay, so I'm using Lalvin Champagne Yeast and I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons in here and this won't take long to react. So the yeast is currently sitting on top. Some of it's beginning to sink a little. I'm going to put the lid on, but I'm not putting the airlock in just yet. The airlock is to prevent contamination from entering. I think I can risk it for a few minutes with that little hole there. And I'm just going to help the yeast sink. The, the liquid is warm, but it's not hot. It's slightly warmer than body temperature, which is fine. And this will not take long to begin to ferment. Well, it's been less than 30 minutes, but I think it's fairly safe to say that the fermentation has started. So I've just popped the airlock in and already you can see that the pressure from the CO2 release is pushing that water. This is going to be a strong fermenter. So I think it's safe to say that my wine is on its way. So now I'm going to need to leave it for about three or four weeks before decanting it and removing the sediment. So I'll be back. Cheers folks. Well, hello from the uh, slightly untidy and uh, messy kitchen, but you know, a messy kitchen's a busy kitchen. Uh, today, I'm going to be taking the wine out of this demijohn. I'm going to be putting it into this demijohn, and then I'm going to be putting it back into this demijohn. And the reason I'm doing that is to clear the sediment that's in the bottom. So the fermentation has really slowed down. It was an extremely fast fermenter to begin with. Now it's really slowed down, but there is still life in it yet. It just needs to be reinvigorated but I want to take this out so we've got a better chance of getting more wine and a clearer wine at the end of it. 
So I'm just cleaning my equipment out at the minute. And in this pan, I'm just warming some water up and I'm going to add to that water a bit of sugar. I'm not measuring this. Let's say there's probably 200, 300 grams of sugar gone in there. And I want the sugar to melt as the water warms because this is going to help to reinvigorate the yeast and kickstart the fermentation. Time to get sucking. Oh, that's dry. So you can see where I've got the siphon tube in that demijohn. I need to keep it above the sediment. So that's what I'm left with. And that is the good wine. Unfortunately, that all has to go to waste. I can't use it on the garden. It'll just kill anything it touches. So I've given the original demijohn a, a rinse out. So I'm just going to pour back in now. And then I want to add back in my sugar water. I'm going to add a bit more water also to top it up. I'm going to add a little bit of granulated sugar as well. This is Young's yeast nutrient. It's really good at kickstarting uh, yeast after it's stopped, slowed down or stopped fermenting. So I'm just going to put a teaspoonful of this into there. But also for good measure, I'm just going to add a tiny bit more yeast. So this is fresh yeast, which hasn't been uh, used before. And it's just a little bit, literally um, a third of a teaspoon. And I'm just going to pop that in there just to breathe a bit more life into it. And that's all going to start fermenting again nicely now. So I'm just going to put the airlock back on with the lid. And we'll just wait for the fermentation to begin again. In the meantime, I've put it back with its associates and I shall report back next when I'm going to clear the wine. Hi from the winemaker's kitchen, folks. The apple red grape and plum wine has been fermenting away nicely for a month. But now I want to clear it and bottle it. So I've got a clean and fresh demijohn just here and I'm going to pour the wine from the original demijohn into the new one. So that's half of the wine in and I'm now using wine finings and these are from Clear It Wine Finings. And what I'm going to begin by doing is using finings A, which goes into the bottle, into the demijohn, sorry, a couple of splashes. And then I add the rest of the wine back into the demijohn. So I've left the sediment in the bottom. I've managed to pour it without getting that. So I'm just going to chuck this away because that's that will help to clear it if it's not there. So here we've got that. Now I need to leave this for an hour and then I can add the rest of the finings. So an hour's passed and I'm now going to transfer the wine back into the original demijohn. And again I'm stopping halfway to add the wine finings again. This time I'm adding Findings B, and again, a little drop there, and then add the rest of the wine. So the wine's back in the demijohn, and it's still fermenting, but the finings should grip hold of all the matter that you can see in there and drag it to the bottom 
and hopefully we'll be left with a clearer wine. So I'm going to leave that for a few days and then we'll come back to it. Well, hello from the wintry kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be bottling the apple, red grape and plum wine. So I've got my bottles cleaned and sterilised and to each bottle I'm going to add a teaspoonful of sugar and I'm doing that because I want it to kickstart the fermentation so the wine will have a slight sparkle. Okay, so now for the fun bit. See you later suckers. So I'm siphoning from the Demijohn in a clean siphoning tube into each of the bottles. I'm estimating looking at how much is in the Demijohn that I've got enough for four full bottles and then a, a, a sample for later to try it. And each of these bottles is a, a proper sparkling wine, champagne or Prosecco bottle, um, or in this case a fizzy cider bottle, capable of uh, withstanding the pressures of the uh, fermentation that will take place inside. So I, I need to add that the wine hasn't cleared. I have put the finings in to try and clear it, but it hasn't properly cleared. So this is going to be one that is a little bit cloudy, a bit like a scrumpy. It does happen quite a bit with apple uh, wine, this. It sounds like it's got a little bit of life in it anyway, so that's a good sign for a sparkling wine. I just need to make sure that the siphoning pipe doesn't get the sediment. In fact, that's going to stop any second and we'll get bubbles in the siphon tube. There we go. And that's as much as I'm going to take. So I'll just give it a little try, see what it's like. It doesn't look too bad in the glass. It's not clear, but it doesn't look too bad though. Anyway, the proof is in the taste. It's definitely got a sparkle. Quite strong, fruity. It's decent. So if I give that a couple of weeks in the bottles to mature a little bit and for the next fermentation to kick in, that should be a decent sparkling wine. So I've got the plastic um, stoppers in hot water just to soften them. Otherwise they're virtually impossible to get in. Okay, so I'll get the stoppers in the tops now. Shake off the excess water and push. And in. Oh, and in. And in. The next important step is to get these on because otherwise we're going to see corks flying and these actually do serve a genuine purpose of keeping them in place. So that's one done, two, three, So there we have it folks, four bottles of apple, red grape and plum wine, hopefully going to be sparkling, all bottled, I need to put the labels on them and then we'll open the first bottle and try it in a couple of weeks time. So until then, see you later kids. Okay, so it's been two weeks since bottling, there's the finished wine. And now it's time to sample. So I'm looking for four key elements. First of all, I want it to look clear. Secondly, I want it to smell good. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, I want it to taste good. But number four, I'd also like it to have a sparkle. So if I can get three out of four of those, I'll be very happy, but I won't know until I open it. So here goes, let's see what happens. 
That's hurting my hand. Hmm. Not much of a pop. Let's see how it looks. We have a sparkle. And that is clear. We've got a clear sparkling wine. And whilst it didn't pop, which I was hoping it would, that doesn't look bad at all. Smells nice. Smells quite dry and quite fruity. I don't know whether it will be dry. Taste will tell. It's a medium. And it really is fruity actually. The grape comes through, the plum comes through. I've got to say it's a success. I'm happy with it, yeah. Definitely tasty. It's not hugely strong and it's not syrupy. Sometimes these wines can be quite syrupy. This is definitely a thin wine and I would guess around ABV somewhere between 8 and 10% by that taste. Hugely drinkable, very pleasant, a success. Anyway, cheers folks. I'll catch you next time. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.